Hello, my friends, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to do a cook with me, but it is a canning cook with me. Um, you've seen me make jams and jellies and stuff like that before, but I've never dedicated a whole video to canning, and I've had several of you ask me to do that. Like when I can something, instead of putting it in a weekend vlog, if I would do a cook with me. So your wish, my command. So today we are making zucchini relish out of the Bible of canning, the ball blue book. It is one of only three resources, well, three bound resources that I use for canning. Um, my other resource is online. It is um, through the National Center for Home Preservation. I don't use any um, That's what I'm looking for. Uh, Pinterest recipes or anything like that because you never know if they have been tested. And you've heard me say it a thousand times. Cooking is an art. Canning is a science. And I am not going to use any recipe that has not been tested by science. I do not want to take the chance of getting my family ill. I know there are rebel canners out there. I know people say, well, my grandmother did it this way for, you know, 50 years and nobody died. You have to use your comfort level. My comfort level is using recipes that have been tested by a kitchen laboratory, whether it be your extension office, whether it be the National Center for Home Preservation, Ball, Barnden, any of those. So that's what I use. This recipe is out of the Ball Blue Book, like I said, the Bible of preserving on page 89 for zucchini relish. It yields four half pint jars. So it, it's a lot of work for a little yield, but so worth it and so delicious. I decided not to double it. I'm going to just make several single batches. Um, I just feel more comfortable doing that. I don't feel comfortable doubling. So I'm going to show you how to make it and maybe you'll give it a try. The nice thing about this, it is water bath canned. You do not need a pressure canner. So Anybody can make this without a lot of special equipment. You don't need a specific water bath can, or you can just use a big pot and put some kind of rack in the bottom. So as long as your jars are covered one inch and off of the bottom of the pot, you're good. So not a lot of special equipment needed for this, my friends, but let's get started on this zucchini relish. Okay, the ingredients we need for our zucchini relish. Now this is just the ingredients. This is not any equipment. We'll get to that later. We need three medium zucchinis. It needs to be two cups of chopped zucchini. This is what I had sitting here, so this is what I grabbed. We need onion. We need that one cup chopped. We need a half a cup of green bell pepper chopped and a half a cup of red bell pepper chopped. We also need two teaspoons of celery seed, one teaspoon of mustard seed. Oh, I forgot to get the apple cider vinegar out. We need apple cider vinegar, one cup, 5% acidity. That's important. I will not be using my homemade apple cider vinegar because I don't know what the acidity is. So we will be using commercial. We're also going to need sugar. We need one and three quarter cups. Yes, this is super duper sweet as relish usually is. And then this is optional. This is pickle crisp by ball. It just keeps things from getting soggy when you can them. And then we're going to need some pickling or preserving salt, but basically that is just salt with no additives. So I am just using my Redmond's Real Salt because that has zero additives in it. You don't want to use something like a Morton's, you know, iodized salt or table salt from, you know, the little stuff in the cylinder things. You want to use a real salt or a pickling salt. So that's all we need for the ingredients and we need to go start chopping. I, this is crazy, I know, I prefer to chop my zucchini by hand because I don't like it too chopped. I like tiny little squares. It's cathartic, I don't mind doing it. Same with the peppers, but the onion, I'm probably gonna throw in the food processor to be honest with you. But the rest I will chop by hand. Okay, so the first thing I did was I washed my zucchini and I chopped off the stem and the blossom end. And now I am just going to chop it into little tiny pieces. 
Like I said, you could totally do this in a food processor. I just, I don't know. Maybe if I had a better food processor, my food processor is not a good one. I could kick myself. There was one at, on sale at Costco the other day and I meant to go back and get it and I didn't. So now I'm stalking the Costco website to see if it goes on sale again. But you just wanna chop them nice and small because don't forget, this is a relish. It's not like a salad or something where you want big pieces of your vegetables. It's a relish. So we are just gonna chop them nice and small. And we need two cups. So I am going to keep chopping. I have a measure here. I'm going to start putting it in there. So as soon as I get my two cups, I can stop and go on to the peppers and the onions. Like I said, it's not hard, but it is a lot of chopping. If you choose to do it by hand, just pop in a podcast or a YouTube video or whatever it is you like to listen to or watch and it makes the time go super duper quick. So I'll be back when this is all done. Okay, there's our two cups of chopped zucchini. I'm just gonna add that to our bowl. You wanna try to make sure it does not have to be perfect. You do not have to get out a ruler, but you wanna try to get it all about the same size. Um, that is just best practices for canning to have all of your ingredients about the same size, just so the, the canning process, the density works the way it's supposed to. So about all the same size. And then from there, we're going to go to our peppers. We're going to do a half of a cup each of green and red. Same thing with these. You just wanna try to keep them about the same size as the zucchini, just to do best practices. So I am going to go chop up a half a cup of the green pepper and a half a cup of the red pepper. Then we'll move on to the onion, which I think I am gonna put in the food processor, just because it's easier. And I want the onion just a little bit smaller. I don't like big pieces of onion. So it will be about the same size. And I honestly am not good at chopping onions. So we will go finish all this and I will show you our next steps once everything is chopped. Our green pepper. Honestly, guys, it took me less than two minutes to chop it up. The zucchini did not take long at all. So I know I said it's a little bit more time consuming to chop by hand, but it's really, really not horrible. So you just decide the way you wanna do it and no judgment here. Everybody's got their own thing and how they like to do things. So like I said, to me, this is just kind of methodical and almost relaxing, I don't know. I don't know, maybe if I had to make 100 jars today, I wouldn't feel that way, but we're not making 100 jars. One recipe, like I said, makes four. I would like to get three recipes of this going in three separate bowls, but we will see, so. Last year, I did not make nearly enough and demand was high. Um, I ran out pretty quickly, so. I definitely wanna make more this year so I can share with family and friends and for my family too. So I'm gonna go finish up the red pepper and then move on to the onions. And then once the onions are done, that is all our chopping. And then I will show you how to prepare the vegetables, they do have to sit for two hours. So this isn't something like jam where you can just say, oh, I'll do it now and it'll be done in an hour. 
this is something you want to start first if you have other work to do whether it be outside work or kitchen work or if you just want to sit down and put your feet up and read a book get your vegetables going first because then you have two hours where the vegetables are soaking and you can get some other stuff done i love to multitask and look at recipes and decide you know if something has to rest if something has to marinate if something has to wait get that going and then see what i can do while that's happening so we're going to get this done and get our onion done okay friends all of our vegetables are in the bowl we've got our two cups of zucchini our one cup of chopped onion our half a cup of chopped green pepper bell pepper and our half a cup of chopped red bell pepper so now what i'm going to do is i am going to take two tablespoons of our pickling salt or real salt and i'm just going to sprinkle it right over the vegetables yes two tablespoons now two tablespoons of salt is not going to be in the final recipe because we are going to drain and rinse this eventually so once i get the salt on there i'm just going to give that a quick mix And then we are going to pour cool water over it just until all the vegetables are covered. So that looks about good right there. That was about a pint of water, about two cups. And then we are going to set this aside and we're gonna let it stand for two hours. Then we are going to drain it, rinse it, and move on to the next step. Like I said, this recipe is not hard. You do just have to plan for it. So I am going to put this aside and set a timer for two hours and I'm gonna go get some more work done. Okay, it has been a couple hours since our vegetables were sitting in the brine. So before we rinse them, I want to get this brine or this liquid started. So in my saucepan here, you want to use a non-reactive saucepan like stainless steel or glass. You don't want to use aluminum or whatever else is reactive. <laughs> um, in here, I have one and three quarter cups of sugar and to that, I'm going to add two teaspoons of celery seed. You know I keep it real around here. Whatever else is reactive. And then I'm gonna add one teaspoon of mustard seed. And then to that, we are going to add one cup of the 5% apple cider vinegar. My whisk is in the dishwasher. Let me grab that. Okay, and we're gonna turn this on and we're gonna bring this up to a simmer, which is about 180 degrees. And I just have it over medium high heat. And while this is coming up to the simmer, we're gonna go take care of those vegetables. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to drain our vegetables. So I just have my big sieve here in the sink. I'm gonna pour it in so it all drains. And then we're gonna rinse it really well under cold water. This is getting all of that two tablespoons of salt off, most of it anyway and getting it ready to go into the canning liquid. So I'm just gonna rinse that real well under cold water and let that sit and finish draining while we get the canning liquid ready.
Okay, we have our canning liquid up to a simmer. So now I'm just going to add in our vegetables. And then we are going to let these simmer in the liquid for 10 minutes. Now, of course, when you put these in, it's going to reduce the temperature in the liquid. So you're gonna have to bring it back up to a simmer. And we're gonna let that go for 10 minutes. Then we're gonna start getting them in the jars. And speaking of the jars, in my canner over here, I've got my jars warming up. And back here on the stove, I have my lids warming up. And as you all know, I've talked about it before, my new favorite canning lid are the four jars canning lids. The quality of these is unbelievable. I love that they are made in the USA. They are BPA free and I have yet to have any jar failures with the four jars lids. I do have a discount code for you. You get 10% off of your order. I will link it down in the description box below. There's a link and a code. So if you are a canner, definitely check these lids out. I think you will love them as much as I do. So we are gonna let this get back up to the simmer and then we're gonna get this stuff canned up. And how easy was this? And boy, is this delicious. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see the bubbles on the surface, but this is up to a simmer and I set the timer for 10 minutes and we're just gonna let that go, stirring occasionally for 10 minutes. Okay, this has about 30 seconds left to go and I just wanted to show you the color. Now I am doing, I'm only showing you one batch. I am actually doing three batches at one time and I just wanted to show you this one I just put in. See the color of that versus the color of this? Um, because this one's been cooking a little while. So totally normal, this is exactly what you want. So this has just a few more seconds and we're gonna get it canned up. Okay, it just occurred to me, I probably shouldn't be using this striped towel. It makes for very bad filming, but it is what it is now. Okay, our zucchini relish is done. So what I'm going to do, I generally don't pull all the jars out at the same time, but because this is such a small batch, it's just easier to put four out because I can work quickly. I'm going to take 1 16th teaspoon of our pickle crisp and put that in the bottom. And I'm gonna get our funnel and our relish. Get that in the jar. We are going to go to a half inch head space. I think I went a little too much cause I'm used to doing jelly with a quarter inch head space. It's okay, we can take it right out. And then we are going to debubble the jar. I can't find my debubbler, so we're just using a chopstick. Anything works. Try not to use metal because you can actually break the jar. And now that I debubble, there's more space, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. Give it one more. Go around, I'm gonna wipe my rim real good. You've seen me do this a hundred times. We're gonna grab our four jars canning lid. Get that on there. And our ring and go down to fingertip tight. And then we're gonna put that aside. Normally I would get it right back in there, but like I said, because I'm doing a small batch, it is not going to cool down while I'm doing just these few.
Okay, two done, two to go, and I am going to go finish those and get these in the canner. Okay, the jars are in the canner. Remember I did say I made multiple batches. I only showed you one. Um, they are in the canner and they are going to come up to a full rolling boil and I'm going to process them for 10 minutes. Processing for 10 minutes, so I just turn the heat off. I'm going to take the lid off and I am going to set the timer now for five minutes and let them stay in the pot for five minutes then we'll take them out. Okay, our timer went off, so we are just going to take the jars and bring them right out and put them over on a towel. And they are just going to sit here for 12 hours until they completely cool. Then we will test the seals. We will mark them and get them on the canning shelves. So there it is, our zucchini relish. Thank you so much for watching. The recipe will be down in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know and I will see you all in my next video.